Hello, and welcome to this weekend's edition of Mox News. I'm Alex McKay. And I'm Harrison White. The NFL has recently been dealing with players and domestic violence incidents. Video of Ray Rice, former running back for the Baltimore Ravens, punching his then fiance, has led to discussions of how cases like this should be handled. The ladies at the Women's Center weigh in on players in the league and domestic violence. Being a professional athlete comes with a lot of mental stressors, and if you're not in a mentally healthy state, I don't think you should be able to play in the NFL. Criticism from communities all over has led to conversation on what this means for victims and players. I think the message they get from our society a lot is that it is their fault and that they're doing something wrong, but no one ever asks for violence to be brought upon them. There are sources for victims to contact for help, including a program on campus. Well, I would tell people that justice and healing looks different for everyone, um, and not to be ashamed if, if it has been happening for weeks, months, years. It's never too late to reach out for help. And a lot of times people don't know where to go for help, or when they attempt to reach out for help, they're blamed as a victim, and that shuts them down immediately. But please know that if you do contact the Transformation Project, we're never going to judge you. We are going to be here to offer you options and resources and give the victim that power to make the decision of how they would like to move forward. If you are someone that has been affected by domestic violence, you can visit the Women's Center from 8 to 5 p.m. Contact them at 423-425-5648 or call campus police to serve as your victim advocate. Scotland votes no for independence from the United Kingdom. People in the country were given the opportunity to vote on seceding from the UK. If majority were to vote yes, it would have broken the tie between Scotland and the UK of over 300 years. People cast their ballots Thursday. More than 4 million residents in Scotland registered to vote, making it, making it the largest electorate in the country. The final results pr proved to be a landslide with roughly 55% of the people voting against independence. American journalist Stan Lothian begins his two-year guest lecture series next Monday, September 22nd, on UTC's campus. The former White House correspondent will speak about the Obama administration and transparency. He will also talk about his start in Chattanooga. The first of his lectures will be Monday at 11 a.m. in the University Center Auditorium. It's free and open to the public. Check back next week for an update on his visit. Fall is in a couple of days. It hasn't been too oppressive as you go outside to cooler temperatures. This will continue as the season changes. Mox News weather reporter Courtney Myrick has your forecast. Hey Mox, Courtney Myrick with your Mox Eye weather forecast. I know everyone's been enjoying those fall like temperatures this past week, and I think you're really going to like what you have to see coming up in your seven day forecast. All right, so we're looking at a dry start to the weekend, followed by some evening showers on Sunday and Monday. And those seasonal fall like temperatures are going to be sticking around, so I know everyone is really excited to hear about that. Normal temperatures around this time of year are highs of 83 and lows around 61. So again, this week we're experiencing normal temperatures and come Monday, those temperatures will be dropping below average. We're still extremely below yearly rainfall averages this year by 6.53 inches. Fall is right around the corner. The first official day is Monday, September 22nd at 10.29 p.m. and the first full day of fall is on Tuesday, right when those temperatures start dropping. Looking at your three-day forecast, Friday and Saturday will be really nice with a high at 84 and lows in the lower 60s with little chance for any rainfall. Those are going to be the days you'll want to plan your outdoor activities. On Sunday evening, you're looking at pretty low chance for some rainfall, but still a nice high of 83. For your seven-day, Friday and Saturday will have great weather with your highs only in the mid-80s. On Monday, that first day of fall, those temperatures start dropping and everyone can start looking forward to some great weather for the week. There's a 40% chance of some rain on Monday, so just be aware of that. However, the rest of the week, temperatures will stick around the low 80s and finally dropping into those 70 temperatures everyone has been looking forward to. All right, Mox, that was a look at your forecast for the upcoming week. I'm Courtney Myrick with Mox News. An anti-gay billboard is stirring a debate over bullying and religion in the rural community of Portland, Tennessee, about 30 miles north of Nashville. The message reads, you shall not lie with a man as with a woman. It is an abomination, God. The sign says it was paid for by concerned Christians. According to a report in the Nashville Tennessean, the Portland resident who helped place 
said the Old Testament message was needed to balance against the support for gay marriage. But Shannon Lynch, who has taught religion, ethics, and philosophy for 14 years, said she sees a sign as a form of bullying that could have negative effects on young people struggling to find their own identity. The UTC Theater Department will perform the controversial play, Clybourne Park. The Pulitzer Prize winning play will open September 30th. Organizers of the production want to open minds and sharpen dialogue among students. Mox News reporter Joey Gwynn tells us how. UTC's theater department was tasked with breaking barriers this semester. Director Steve Ray believes Clybourne Park does that with comedy as its mediator. There were many theatrical titles discussed to perform this year, but Clybourne Park was chosen for multiple reasons. It won the Pulitzer in, in 2012, so it was highly respected. It hasn't been done uh, here or even locally uh, at all, and we, have, uh, we, we knew we had a, a great group of students that we could cast in these roles. Clybourne Park breaks barriers by wittingly reiterating inequality issues that were pertinent in the past but are still seen in this day and age. We see that racism is still alive in America, that uh, issues uh, uh, of, of race and class still divide America, uh, happen to be very relevant uh, in this play. The thing about this play, though, is that it doesn't treat any of that as sacred. Uh, everything is made fun of. With the nationwide outcry of inequality issues in Ferguson, Missouri, the reception of Clybourne Park at UTC may receive public backlash, but Mr. Ray doesn't expect any. I think at a university we're expected to um, expand the uh, horizons of our audience and our students, and um, I, if it were truly offensive, then it would not have won the Pulitzer Prize because it's... It's, it's, it deals with these very difficult issues in a very smart, albeit funny way. Instead of backlash, perhaps Clyburn Park's results will be awareness and youthful support. But ultimately, Clyburn Park shares UTC's idea of critical thinking. Clyburn Park premieres September 30th at 7.30 p.m. here at UTC's Fine Arts Center. I'm Joseph Gwynn with your Mox News. The UTC CEO Club gives the Florida students to present their business ideas to a panel of judges for their third annual elevator pitch competition. Now for those who watch ABC's Shark Tank, the premise is roughly the same. Students are given the opportunity to pitch their ideas to judges made up of faculty from the College of Business, among others, for potential investment. The pitch could be no longer than two minutes. That's about the length of an elevator ride, which explains the title. Wednesday was the first round among 15 competitors with only a third able to proceed to the next round. The winner of the competition will get a chance to present their ideas in a national CEO pitch competition in which they can win prize money. Well, it's really exciting because we have no idea what most people are going to pitch, so it will just be very interesting to hear some new ideas and uh, you, know, you know, also meet people that you know, we didn't know we went to class with and you know, see how innovative they are. The event was open to students who were impressed with their peers and the ideas laid out on the table. Round two will be on October 1st at 3 p.m. in the Hamilton County Business Development Center. Be sure to stay tuned for Mox News for updates on this competition. UTC Cab kicked off their first music in the pit this Wednesday with singer Rachel Brown in the University Center. Students enjoyed listening to Brown's music while socializing and eating lunch with their friends. It's really good. I think that it's awesome the way that they have it all set up, especially in the UC, because people who didn't even know that it was happening are here and they get to experience it as well. It's a good addition to everybody getting to eat and uh, I think it's really upbeat and brings a good vibe. CAB's goal this year is to bring many events that students can enjoy at no cost. The events range from movie nights to concerts. They are planning diverse events to grab the attention of all the students. CAB's small concert chair says she encourages students to participate in the exciting events planned this year. A ton of events coming up. Um, in two weeks we have Battle of the Bands, which is another one of my events. Um, it's coordinated with the homecoming, so I'm looking forward to that. We're having student performers come and do some different acts, so that'll be really good. Um, we have a ton of events. for. We have a minute to win it coming up in a couple weeks. For more information and updates on CAB events, check out their Facebook page at UTC Campus Activities Board. Middle Tennessee State University is changing its financial aid package to encourage students to graduate in four years. The university will supplement the HOPE lottery scholarships of students who stay on track. The school will pay $500 to HOPE students after each of their first two years. 
The school also will pay what is called what it calls a finish line scholarship to graduating seniors to cover any tuition increases the student paid over the four years. InterVarsity Christian Fellowship had an open mic night called Soulful Tuesday in the Multicultural Center. Students showcased their talents with spoken word, music, and acting. A sense of community and hopefully bring a few students out of their shells because we did have to beg a few students to do their thing. There was a great turnout of students that came to watch and support friends. InterVarsity's next event is Are We OK? September 23rd. It will be a discussion about black students in today's society. Sequoia Review will be releasing another edition of their journal soon and are looking for submissions. Students, if you have literary works you want to see published, you can submit fiction, poetry, nonfiction, and visual art by September 30th. You can do this by going online to sequoiareview.com. That does it for this edition of Mox News. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to check out our YouTube videos uploaded throughout the week. Tune in on the TV channel 2.1. Have a great weekend here from all of us at Mox News. Go Mox!